Welcome to Schacht Spindle Company. I'm Barry Schacht, founder and CEO. We're very pleased to take you on this virtual tour today. During more normal times, one of the great pleasures is meeting you face to face so that we can also learn about you and your part in our weaving and spinning communities. Our factory is located on three beautiful acres in Boulder, Colorado. It's a comfortable landscape with trees and flowers and our very own employee gardens. As we head inside, you'll see that we are a very modern woodworking facility. You'll also see a lot of exceptional handwork being done by a very dedicated and diverse group of craftspeople. I hope that you enjoy this time with us and we look forward to a time when we can meet you in person. Come on inside. Barry and his brother Dan founded Czech Spindle Company in 1969. They moved to the current location in 1985. Here, they built a factory of 35,000 square feet. It's a big factory because it contains a lot of machinery. Everything from huge saws, molders, and CNC machines, to lathes and drum sanders, to handheld power tools. The factory also contains 50 employees who make, ship, and support checked products. Wherever possible, the makers use machinery, but a lot of operations have to be done by hand. You'll see this as we follow the manufacturing process from beginning to end. Wood pieces get their start in the production area, where they go through three stages. Raw lumber comes out of the barn, where it's dimensioned into blanks. Here, Sean and Chai feed rough sawn lumber into the rip saw, where it's reduced in width to fit into the molder. Then, Sean sends these narrower pieces through the molder. It planes off wood on all four sides, dimensioning each piece to a stock size. Sean frequently measures for accuracy, as all our employees do throughout the manufacturing process. It's critical that we hold to tight tolerances. Parts generally have to fit within 1 64th of an inch, or the finished product may not function properly. This milled lumber can now be cut into shorter pieces called blanks. At this point, Sean uses an upcut saw to make blanks. These are for the wheel rims of Cherry Shack Reeves spinning wheels. Blanks get cut into roughs on CNC machines. For each cutting operation, a computer file tells the CNC what cuts to make on every blank on a board. Here, Trevor is setting up a board to add grooves on trestle stand arms. He places eight blanks on the board and makes sure each one is properly positioned. Then, he turns on the machine and lets it run. The grooves appear like magic. CNC machines can make a lot of cuts and holes, but only from the top of the board. Roughs often need holes, grooves, mortises, and tenons on the sides, ends, or edges. In these cases, our woodworkers use smaller machines and jigs specific to each part. Peter has set up a lathe for drive wheels on hand bobbin winders. He clamps the drive wheel into the machine, lets the machine shape the groove, And then finally, he checks it for quality. Sean has a cart of roughs to end bore. He sets up the machine with a jig, then he can process the whole cart load very quickly and very accurately. The production department also makes and shapes metal parts. The heddle bars on loom shafts or the slide locks on wolf looms get made right here at Shaft. In addition, some parts that we purchase have to be reshaped, such as the metal pern spindles in our end delivery shuttles. Here, Chai rounds off the square edges. Wood roughs may also need shaping. For instance, the curved ends of a boat shuttle 
are created on a shaper. Gerardo has jigs for each shuttle size and shuttle style. He clamps the rough into his jig and shapes each end. On the right, you can see the shuttle rough right when it came off the CNC. On the left, it has been shaped. Now, boat shuttles get branded with the shack logo and then Gerardo sands them. He carefully smooths each one to a perfect finish so it won't snag on a weaving project. If you own a shacked boat shuttle, chances are it was shaped and sanded by Gerardo. In the oil room, sanded parts get a Danish oil finish to protect the wood. Every piece gets dipped into a vat, then wiped down by hand. Here, Cherie wipes down rattle parts for the perfect finish. Now, at last, parts are ready for the assembly department. In the spinning wheel room, all the shacked wheels come to life. Jillian adds treadles to a matchless wheel. Then she makes final adjustments to the wheel hub. After each wheel gets assembled, someone takes it for a test drive. Then it's partially disassembled for packing and shipping. The test drive explains why your new matchless wheel came with some yarn on the bobbin. Other areas within assembly specialize in the preparation of specific products. Shua bags hardware for our new Eris tapestry loom. Behind her, Marta builds rigid heddles for cricket and flip looms. In the area devoted to rigid heddle looms, Adan packs crickets. Next to him, Maria assembles 30-inch flip looms. She places the sides on her table to attach the cloth beam and the front beam. She adds a dowel handle on each end and secures the ratchet gear. She wraps the dowel handles for shipping. Once the front is done, Maria turns around the loom and repeats all these steps on the back. Finally, Maria folds the loom, she can do that with a flip, and wraps it up with accessories to fit in its shipping box. Floor looms are also built in assembly. Floor looms take up several large tables and workstations. For instance, when Luz assembles harnesses, her table has a drill set up. She uses a jig to position the heddle hook. Then she inserts the heddle bar and fits it into the heddle hook. At another workstation, Troy makes wolf breaks. He swages the cable to form a loop, cuts the cable, and then attaches the cable to the brake bar with another swaged loop. Troy has a special building table to assemble floor looms. He can raise, lower, and rotate it for different steps. Here, he installs the brake system on a Cherry Wolf Pup 810. Once he's done, it will get packed with all its accessories, then it will head into our shipping department, and from there it goes to some lucky weaver. Our shipping department pays a lot of attention to detail. Here we see Mandy packing up weaving bobbins and perns, a simple order. For floor looms and spinning wheels, several members of our team gather accessories, double check all the contents, and pack everything very carefully.
As you can see, Schacht Spindle Company has come a long way since 1969. It started with a single drop spindle and then added a tapestry loom. Now we make over 100 types of products, many with multiple variations. In the early days, employees used to shape every wood part individually. Once we switched to CNC machines, that really speeded things up, but a lot of steps simply cannot be automated. Shaping, sanding, oiling, and assembling require people. Schacht has always relied on human hands to make its products. We've also relied on human hands to use our products. Here's to another 51 years of handcrafting excellence.